I want to illustrate the idea of inverse probability weighting with a fictitious simple example where we have two regions, region A and B. And in each region we have subjects in the control and treatment group, uh, but they were really exogenously assigned. So here's no option uh, that can be rejected. If you are assigned to the treatment group, then you are there. So we don't have an instrumental variable setting, but rather a um, OLS setting to, to keep things sufficiently simple to better explain this inverse probability weighting. So in region A, there are 10 people in the control group, 10 people in the treatment group. Um, and uh, in region B, there are only five people in the control group and 15 people in the treatment group. So the assignment probability to be in the control group if we are from region B is 25% and it's 75% to be in the treatment group when you're in region B. And these assign the inverse one over 25% for the control group people will be basically their weight later in the OLS regression. While in region A, both uh, the sign probabilities to be in the control group or the treatment group are 50%. So their weight will be one over 50%. That's actually two, one over one half um, for, for the members here in, in region A. Okay, but before we come to this Rated equation. Let us compute by hand the average treatment effect of this treatment uh, in our experiment. And assume for this that in region A, 30% of the job seekers have found a job that were in the control group, but 40% that were in the treatment group. So for region A, we have a treatment effect, an average treatment effect in region A of these 40%. The number, uh, the share of job seekers who found a job in the treatment group minus the 30% the share of job seekers that found them in the control group. So we have an average treatment effect of 10 percentage points. That's by how much uh, being treated increases your chance to find a job in region A. In region B, we first find that already for those in the control group, they have a much higher chance to find a job. So region B is kind of a uh, region that there's a lot of economic activity, it's easy to find a job. So even in the control group, 60% found already a job. And in the treatment group, even 80% of subjects found a job. So here the treatment effect would be this 80% minus 60%. So we have a um, 20 percentage point increase of the probability to find a job if you're treated in region B. So now, so region B differs from A not only by a different baseline probability, but also by a larger treatment effect. Now, if you want to compute the average treatment effect in the whole country, so in region A and B together, we just take the weighted average of the separate treatment effects of both regions, and we weight basically by the population size. So in region A, we have 20 people, so the weight would be 20 over the total population, so that's just one half times this 10% treatment effect. And region B also has 20 people, so the weight is the same, 21, 40 is one half, times this uh, average treatment effect from region B, uh, one half times um, this 20, and there we just have the average of these treatment effects is 15 percentage points, the average between region A and B because they have the same size. So the average treatment effect in our setting will be 15 percentage points. L let me add the assumptions that uh, region A and B are exactly the same size. So when I took this average uh, between the regions, I should basically weight by the total population, not only by the population in our sample, but let's assume that also the total population between A and B has the same size. Now, the inverse probability weighting means that the people in the control group in region B will basically get the largest weight when we want to compute the average treatment effect using a, a weighted least squares regression. Uh, because here the probability to be in the control group and from region B is only 25%. So one over this is basically four, one over 25%. Um, and this is basically the largest weight. And, and those who are in the treatment group will get the smallest weight. Uh, and those who are in the control group or treatment group in region uh, A get, get the weight in between.
And I want to illustrate that actually when we compute this average treatment effect in this way, as we've done here, it's already the case that people from the control group in region B basically have the largest influence on this average treatment effect. So our computation here kind of already implicitly gave people here, uh, which are at the smallest mobility to be in their, in their group, uh, the largest weight. We shall look at this by, by looking at by how much would this average treatment effect change if an additional individual from region A or B and either from the control group or treatment group would find a job. So one of those chairs of finding a job would then change. And we, 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 we shall see so if one additional in the, of these three, four columns would find a job, by how much would it affect the average treatment effect? And we will see that indeed, if some extra guy from this control group in region B finds a job, it will have to be the largest impact of the average treatment effect. So if I click on this, I have the solution. And um, so let us start with how the average treatment effect changes. If in region A from the control group, now uh, instead four of three of these three control group members find a job. So before we had a share that 30% found a job, so this were only three guys. Now if four guys find a job, we have now the share job found of 40%. What will then be the average treatment effect in region A? Well, the guys from the control group treated, treatment group have the same probability to find a job, so we have an average treatment effect in region A of only zero percentage points. The treatment doesn't seem to bring anything. I mean, this is our sample average treatment effect. Of course, there may be um, a noise. And if we take the mean over both regions, now we have the mean between 0 and 20, so we have an average treatment effect of 10%. So the in, compared to the baseline case, it reduces the average treatment effect by 5 percentage points. Now what happens if um, a guy from the treatment group in region A, uh, one guy more finds a job. So before we had basically four guys, now five guys find a job. We reset kind of the control group uh, level to the original 30%. Uh, then now we have basically 50% um, of the guys from the treatment group from region, region A find a job. So the treatment effect is 50% minus 30% percent is 20 percent and now the total average treatment effect over both regions is, is 20 percent so we have a five percent increase so kind of we have have the same absolute change whether a guy from the control group or treatment group uh, uh, finds an additional job it changes the total average treatment effect by five percentage points now what happens if from the um, control group in region b and that was kind of the a group with the smallest number and where, where we had kind of the if you're from region b uh, the, the lowest probability to end up in the group you end up is if you are have ended up in the control group from region b there you only had a 25 percent probability to end up there and if if now uh before we had basically three out of the five guys found a job so uh, that was 60 percent. now if one guy more finds a job if four uh guys from these five guys finds a job we have a share job found that is 80%. Yeah, so one additional guy here changes the uh, share job found by 20 percentage points because there are only five guys. And um, now if we now compute the um, treatment effect in region B, it's 80% minus 80% is 0%. And then taking the average over both regions, one half 10% plus one half zero percent is 5%. But that means our original average treatment effect which was 15% uh, is now reduced by 10 percentage points to this 5% only. So here, uh, changing whether a guy from this control group in region B has found a job or not has kind of a twice as large effect on our computed average treatment effect than if, if some guy from control group or treatment group in region A uh, uh, changes his outcome. So the outcomes of these five guys basically have the biggest impact on the average treatment effect in the way we have computed it. And that's the correct way how one should compute it. And finally, let's uh, see what happens if uh, one more guy from um, the treatment group in region B finds a job. Uh, before it were only 12 guys, now it's 13 guys. So this shifts up these 80% uh, 
uh, found job only by 6.667 percentage points. And uh, we get now a treatment effect in region B of 26.67 percentage points. Uh, and, and overall, our new average treatment effects over both regions is just 18.33 percentage points. So um, we only increase this by, by less than 5%. So kind of here, uh, the guys from the treatment group in B, if, if one guy changes here, it has the smallest impact on the total average treatment effect. And also note that kind of, the people that are in this group had, had the highest probability to end up in their group. So if you are from region B to end up in the treatment group, basically the probability was 75%. So, and, and the, their impact on the average treatment effect is kind of the inverse of, of this uh, probability to end up in their group. Um, we can summarize these results in, in this table here. So here were again region A, region B and the control and treatment group that were the sample sizes. Here's kind of the assignable probability to, to the probability to end up basically in your group. So when you are from region A, you had a probability of one half to end up in the control group and a uh, probability of one half to end up in the treatment group. Yeah, because in both we have the same number of people. If we were from region B, you um, end up um, um, only with probability one quarter in the control group and with probability three quarter in the treatment group. Now the weights that will be used in the weighted least square sequestration are the inverse of those assignment or selection probabilities. So here it's one over one half. So uh, in region A, we have weights of two and in region for both control and treatment group in region B, we have a weight of four. So one over one quarter if you're in the control group and only a weight of um, four, uh, four thirds when you're in the treatment groups. And if we look at our computed impact on the average treatment effect that we have computed here, if, if one of those guys in this group changes his outcomes, we, we saw that the absolute impact for those guys in region A was five. And for the guy in, in, in the control group in region B, the, he changes the average total average treatment effect by 10 percentage points twice as much. But we also see that this weight we would give in here, if we would you see, uh, inverse of the selection probability as weight is also twice as large. So this uh, impact here on the average treatment effect is kind of proportional to this inverse of the assignment probability. And you can also find that's also the case here for the treatment group uh, in region B, that the smallest impact, but they also would get here the smallest weight. And that's kind of the intuition that if we want to replicate this computation of the average treatment effect with a regression, we or with a weighted regression without adding any control variables or, or region dummies, we, we would basically um, use this inverse probability weights because um, the uh, people have a larger impact on the computation of the average treatment effect. The smaller is basically the probability that they've ended up in the group they are because then there are fewer people in kind of in, in this group and, and uh, the outcome of one person has a bigger impact on the average treatment effect. So that's the intuition by using this inverse of selection probabilities or of sign probabilities. Uh, we compute the average treatment effect in this setting. And in a similar way, if we will have an instrumental variable setting, using such a weighted regression will uh, help us computing the local average treatment effect or the other word, the complier average treatment effect.